Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening everyone. A syringe vending machine installed just metres away from a Tasmanian primary school will be removed following community outrage. The machine is part of a harm minimisation strategy, but after facing significant backlash, the government conceded late this afternoon it will find a more suitable location. This is the offending syringe vending machine across the road from East Derwent Primary School next to the Bridgewater Community House. Oh mate, I was fuming. Despite being placed next to a rubbish bin, Barry says last week two used syringes were found up the road in somebody's front yard. Yeah, right outside the gate. Two noodles with blood in it. It's just crazy. This drug support worker says there's misunderstanding around the equipment which is available for people to access clean syringes 24-7. It's not just about doling out equipment, encouraging people to use, it's actually about talking about people's health, how to be responsible. Uh, we're all for sensible measures that uh, reduce harm in the community, that's okay. But some community members aren't convinced. But putting that outside of school, it's not on. So I would be quite surprised if it is somebody who has just sort of taken them, grabbed them and just thrown them away. Chemists, maybe something like that, um, but not outside the school where they can just go and help themselves whenever they want to. So, no, totally against it. Late this afternoon, the government conceded it will be removed following community outrage. Public Health will now review the area to identify other suitable options. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian coroner is calling on the government to consider enacting the crime of choking as a separate offence in domestic violence situations. It comes from a report into the death of Hobart woman Jodie Michelle Eaton, who was strangled by Darren Michael Dobson in 2014. In a statement, Attorney General Elise Archer says the coroner's recommendation will be considered. Investigations are underway into the death of a pilot whale which was discovered at Cloudy Bay yesterday. Wildlife authorities say they don't believe there are any unusual circumstances. At around midday, the carcass was found, prompting staff from the Marine Conservation Program to collect it and undertake investigations. Despite pilot whales often travelling in pods, parks and wildlife staff say there were no other animals stranded. If a whale is discovered, De Pipwi is reminding people to contact the whale hotline. There's a debate brewing tonight over whether Tasmania should introduce a new Christmas Eve public holiday. As Queensland prepares to introduce the change, unions have thrown their weight behind the idea, while others have been left less than impressed. The busy Christmas period, a peak time for business. Over the weekend, the Queensland Government announced plans to celebrate Christmas Eve with a new half-day public holiday. Unions now pushing for Tasmania to follow suit. Allowing families um, to have more time and individuals to have more time to be out and about spending rather than working is a good thing for the business community. The Queensland changes mean businesses would start paying penalty rates from 6pm on December 24. But the Small Business Council says it's a change which would have detrimental impacts if introduced in Tasmania. If it was to come into effect, I'd see lots and lots of small businesses and predominantly those in the hospitality sector choose to either put a whopping surcharge on or choose to think that they'll close the doors at 6 o'clock. Tasmanians celebrate nine statewide public holidays every year, but the government revealed it has no immediate plans to establish any more. I think we need to have a proper conversation around the impact of things uh, that actually increase people's ability to work on public holidays uh, and be paid appropriately and then spend in our community. I think in Tasmania, the community is really keen to have a conversation around public holidays. A polarising topic, but it could be a long time before Christmas comes early in Tasmania. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Emergency crews have located two elderly Devonport men who went missing in the Central Highlands overnight. The Westpac rescue helicopter spotted the pair, aged 70 and 94, when they flashed lights from their car at Ponderosa near Lagoon of Islands. Tasmania Police says both men were in good spirits other than being cold and very grateful. 
Drivers could be facing tough new consequences for disrupting traffic flow as the state government rolls out new solutions to tackle growing congestion. The initiatives will see new clearways established and tow trucks on standby. But some say it's too little too late. This new tow truck, the latest addition in the attempt to tackle Hobart's traffic chaos. This is about supporting uh, traffic flow when there's a breakdown or where there's a crash and being able to respond more or less immediately. These vehicles won't be waiting in a depot somewhere for a phone call. They'll actually be on scene. A fleet of these trucks will be strategically parked on busy roads, ready to respond immediately to accidents, breakdowns and illegal parking. A move welcomed by frustrated commuters. There's no redundancy in the network. As soon as there's a single accident crash here on the outlet, the whole system stops. And we've seen examples in the last couple of months of traffic snarls for 20 kilometres. In addition, these signs will be placed along Macquarie Street, extending clearways. Cars in the way will be towed, with drivers facing hefty fines. The government admitting it's only a short-term solution. Stakeholders now calling for more action. Our real call is really around ensuring long-term change, not just the quick wins that are coming through at the moment, which are positive, uh, but will only go a small way to address the, the greater concerns of the area. We still don't have a four-lane Midland Highway. We still don't have any word on the bridge over, over uh, the Tamer River. The Bridgewater Bridge is still a matter of outstanding. There isn't a fifth lane um, on the outlet. The new clearway signage will come into effect tomorrow. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. With Tasmania's housing affordability crisis at breaking point, Homelessness Week 2019 has launched across the country. This year's theme is Housing Ends Homelessness, with the community gathering together to learn more about the issue and what needs to be done. I think it's really important to encourage us all to stop and think about those who are struggling to find a roof uh, to put over their head. Homelessness Week runs until August 12 with events across the state. A lack of skilled workers in Hobart has forced one of the nation's largest shipbuilders to look further afield for staff. As Tasmania's building boom continues to stretch trade resources, INCAT has turned to the northwest to help keep up its busy construction schedule. The final few metres of a long journey. Incat's Derwent Park shipyard taking delivery of a hull for its latest project, Ferry 95. It's a 35 metre vessel. It's the second one we've built for this client. And uh, for the first time in a very long time, if not ever, we had it built, the hull's built by someone other than Incat. Destined for Victorian company Port Phillip Ferries, Incat had to look elsewhere to complete the vessel due to a lack of skilled workers. We've been struggling with labour, to find skilled labour. We've, we've got a very full order book. We never like to say no to an order, especially with a customer that we've be, built with before, so our only choice was to find someone else to build the hole. After an extensive search, deciding on vineyard-based aluminium builders, Haywoods. They had a particular skill set in that um, they do a lot of aluminium work on the northwest coast. Uh, the northwest coast seems to be a, a really good pocket of very skilled tradesmen. Businesses say they're struggling to find skilled workers, but apprentices are enthusiastic for their future. I think Taz Tassie is lacking in this sort of, not industry, but in lacking in, uh, in workforces like this. There's definitely a lot of work here, especially for the young generation. It's, a, it's an opportunity to um, to definitely succeed in skills, knowledge about the trade, especially in the metal trades at the moment. Workers are busy putting together the final touches on this Victorian bound ferry, with the ship due to be in operation by Christmas. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian Aboriginal children have put their creative foot forward on a National Day for Indigenous Youth. They've written and helped illustrate two storybooks in the Palawakani language and even received their own copy at today's launch. Oliver Gardner. I think um, language is an important part of our identity as Aboriginal people, um, so it's very important for us to be able to use these kinds of resources. Also acknowledging the International Year of Indigenous Languages. The red carpet is being rolled out in Devonport with preparations today for the 8th annual HELP Film Festival. Six local schools are showcasing their work along the theme of paying it forward.
It's an opportunity for young people to get together and explore issues that are relevant to them in a creative way. So the general focus is around homelessness and drug and alcohol issues. The top prize is $1,000. For many expectant parents, having a baby can create some fear and this weekend an expo in Launceston is set to shed some light. More than 50 stalls will offer a range of advice for growing Tasmanian families. To connect parents and parents-to-be with all the information, the services, the support, all the products, the education and the information to help them make informed decisions about creating a new baby. The All About Babies Showcase event is on at the Albert Hall this Sunday from 10. North Launceston coach Taylor Whitford is refusing to buy into suggestions his side has the mental edge over the Blues, despite yet another win over their crosstown rivals. Well, Clarence will look to close out the season on a high after their upset win over Lauderdale. Last Saturday's 38-point win was the Northern Bombers' 18th straight over Launceston, but Whitford says his men aren't buoyed or bothered by the impressive statistic approaching September. I mean, we've got to take it each time as it is. Um, you know, we don't speak about it. It's not something that we say, oh, you've beaten Launceston, you know, thus many times previously. It's going to happen again. Uh, it's not spoken about internally, so, uh, yeah, for us, it's, it's no biggie. The side heads south this weekend to take on Lauderdale, but the reigning Premiers won't be taking anything for granted, despite the latter leaders coming off a shock loss to Clarence, which saw injuries to two of their best in Bryce Walsh and Josh McGuinness. I mean, they played a really good game against Launceston. and they've beaten us twice this year, so, you know, we've got something to prove against them, especially down there. They played their ground really well, and they haven't been beaten there this year. While the Roos still have a spring in their step following that upset win. Pretty sweet victory. And said to the players after the game, it's probably one they're going to remember, especially young guys, probably maybe for the rest of their life. With the club in the midst of a rebuild, they'll now look to close out the season on a positive note to further prove to the competition and themselves that they're still a force to be reckoned with. Being beaten by North Hobart and the Tigers, they could have easily packed it up and, you know, the, the year could have just been, you know, done with and we could have fallen even further. Um, but, you know, to their credit, they've really brought into what we wanted to do and what they wanted to do. Um, and it's just great to see them get some reward. The Roos take on Launceston at Blunston Arena this Saturday. And the votes are in for the RACT Insurance Player of the Year in the TSL after round 18 with North Launceston midfielder Josh Ponting judged best on in his side's comfortable win over the Blues. Clarence big man Ryan Bailey was the standout during one of the biggest upset wins of the season against Lauderdale. And Kingborough's Marcus Gardner secured the three votes for his efforts in the Tigers' win over North Hobart. To the leaderboard and Blues on baller Fletcher Seymour remains on top. Three votes clear of Brad Cox, Goodyear and Hayden Smith. And the Hobart Hurricanes have avowed their latest signing for the upcoming WBBL season with leg spinner Macy Gibson hoping to play a crucial role in the squad's success. The Canes took to the road today as part of the club's annual community blitz. It's been a long and hard road to first-class cricket for Gibson, with a 23-year-old already undergoing two knee reconstructions. But the leg spinner is now fully fit and confident she's made the right move down to Tasmania. Being at Sydney Thunder for the last four years, I feel like coming down here, there was a little bit more opportunity for me to kind of take on more of a leadership role, um, especially for the spinners, but just a new environment for me as well. Part of a string of new signings in the Hurricanes camp, including Australian representatives Nicola Kerry, Belinda Vacuera and Taylor Vemenich, Gibson says the side is primed to shake things up this WBBL season, having recently taken out the Northern Territory Strike League competition in Darwin. From the trainings that we've done under the marquee and then taking it to Darwin and how far the girls have come with, with their execution has been amazing. So I've got no doubt that we can at least make the semis and then hopefully win it. There's a lot of girls actually that are very talented in our squad that um, don't know how far they can get yet. So, you know, it's about building belief and keep providing opportunity for them to go showcase their skills. To soccer and the Hobart Zebras will be out to finish the NPL season on a high after yesterday's dominant 4-2 win over traditional rivals Olympia with the club desperate to become a true title contender in 2020. And it's, it's disappointing not to be producing that sort of performance each week. Um, but I guess from, from our perspective, it's we just have to keep on working at it. The side takes on the Kingborough Lions in round 24. And Alex Peroni managed to make up some ground during race two of the Formula 3 championship in Hungary overnight. The Tasmanians started from 26 on the grid after being hit with a 30-second time penalty for this incident in race one. But keen for redemption, Peroni made up 10 spots during the second race to finish up in 16th. The next round of the series will be held at the Spa Circuit in Belgium. 
later this month. 14 degrees today in Hobart. Launceston had a top of 12 with 11 degrees in Burnie and Devonport. Around the state, 15 was the top temperature for Smithton and Campania, 14 for King Island, St Helens and Strawn, 13 degrees at Fingal Grove and on Flinders Island, 12 for Scottsdale with 11 degrees at Cressy and Low Head. Low cloud covers Tasmania today with more bands moving across Bass Strait. Further out, the cloud bands extend over the southeast of the country. The remainder mostly cloud free under a slow moving high. Tomorrow shows the high over the Tasman with a ridge still over New South Wales and parts of southern Queensland. The cold front lies west of the state and continues east with the troughs lying over WA and further north of the continent. Northwesterly winds 15 to 25 knots early on, reaching 30 about the south before increasing to 35 knots later and then shifting westerly. Seas mostly to 2 metres up to 3 at some points. There's a gale warning for southern coastal waters from Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point, a strong wind warning for all remaining coastal waters and a small craft wind alert for the southwest and central lakes. Looking at the forecast, 16 and cloudy in Hobart tomorrow, 14 for Adventure Bay, showers increasing for Taralea, 12 degrees. 14 with light showers for Launceston and Bridport, 13 in Devonport. Showers developing through the west, 13 degrees for Burnie, Strawn and Marawar, with 14 the top for St Helens, 16 in Swansea and 15 degrees for Whitemark with late showers possible. Morning showers expected about the west, the south and also over the Bass Strait Islands on Wednesday, fine elsewhere. Showers extending statewide on Thursday, then contracting to the west and the south a little later on, with showers continuing for the west and the south as well as the Bass Strait Islands on Friday. Looking at your capital cities now, tomorrow 18 in Perth and Adelaide, 15 in showers for Melbourne, 21 in sunny in Sydney with 24 degrees in Brisbane and a few clouds in Cairns, 26. And it's still cloudy at the moment, 11 degrees in Hobart, 8 degrees for Launceston and Devonport. That's all from me, Joe. That's all from the news team for now. Have a lovely evening. We'll see you a bit later with updates. Bye-bye.